Okay. So welcome, everybody. Uh, we are here to talk to you about uh, a neutron feature, the network trunking feature. Uh, let me introduce ourselves first. Please, Armando. Yes. Hi. My name is Armando Miyacho. I work for SUSE. And I am Ben Romšić. I work for Ericsson. Uh, this presentation will be a short 10-minute presentation where we will show you what this feature is good for, what is the basic uh, idea that this feature solves, uh, how the implementation came together, and uh, then the basic workflow of how you can use trunks. We will hopefully have a short time for questions, and if we have even one more minute left, maybe a few further pointers. So. Let's already jump into uh, these two pictures, which tries to explain the basic technical idea of what this feature does. This will make it easier to understand what this feature is good for. So a few years ago, if you wanted to have uh, many networks attached to your Nova server, you could do that. But each of your network connections came with a new virtual network interface cards. And that also came with its own problems. There were certain uh, scaling problems with that. Uh, if you wanted to dynamically attach or detach one of those networks, that also was a kind of complicated event. So we reached back to another uh, network virtualization idea that just to try to multiplex uh, those networks over a single virtual network interface card. And that way, it is possible to uh, attach hundreds or sometimes even thousands of networks to a single Nova server. And it also becomes possible to do that network attachment and detachment quite dynamically. So let me probably jump over to the possible use cases. So if, let's say, you have a TACO virtualized network function, which needs to have connections to hundreds of networks, then this way it is re really easy to set that up. And it is also possible to have built up or t torn down uh, network connections while your VM is running. So on the fly, you can do that. Or maybe if you have uh, use cases like OpenStack Magnum has, so maybe you are running uh, containers inside your OpenStack servers, then it also becomes possible to uh, provide each container inside your servers of its own network or networks. Uh, also, it, it becomes possible uh, with a few extra complications that if you have uh, bare metal servers where your wiring is predecided and it's hardwired, then uh, with this feature you can still become somewhat flexible about what kind of network connections you want to have for your bare metal servers. Okay, and yeah, I think this is the point sure. where I hand it over to you, Armando. So, yeah, so I guess everyone is sold on the idea, you know, powerful concept, the ability to again multiplex uh, networks over a single point. How do we go about creating this without breaking the word? I don't know what's going on. Um, so the idea is, okay, I mean, uh, Neutron started um, as a simple API where you would have ports that would be used to connect network, uh, neutron, um, instances to, to networks. And we, did, we wanted to preserve that. We wanted to keep that unaffected as well as the, inter, the, the interaction between Neutron and, and Nova as, as two separate systems. So the idea was to introduce a, a new first class citizen concept in the API called trunk and use that as a container mechanism to uh, build a logical um, um, uh, topology as, as Ben showed in the early slides. So creating a, a trunk parent that ends up being connected one to many to a number of supports. And those supports will uh, maintain the segmentation details in order to allow the multiplexing. Uh, here I stressed out maintain versus inherits because the inheritance mechanism is, all, is, is, is powerful in scenarios like bare metal provisioning where you cannot re you're not that flexible in coming up with uh, segmentation IDs because there are limitations in the, you know, in, the physical in the physical fabric on what segmentation IDs you can use. Um, there is an asterisk there that's actually um, stating a particular detail that is backend uh, specific in that 
Nova, uh, the neutron, the neutron OBS agent based implementation required to make Nova aware on which bridge the interface, the, the, the uh, instance needed to be con uh, connected in. So the design principle design, you know, behind this, this functionality were primarily two. We wanted to preserve modularity of the solution so that uh, the ML2 framework and the OBS implementation wasn't you know, getting overhauled. Obviously, this is a massive shift in terms of abstractions going from a one-to-one -one, uh, mapping from you know, VM, uh, instances and ports to going from a one-to-many uh, mapping and so there was one particular point that we were, we were really careful during the design. We also wanted to make sure that uh, plumbing an instance into 1,000 networks wouldn't affect the boot, the boot up time of the instance. So we were really careful in making sure that the performance wasn't impacted and you would pretty much achieve constant boot up time um, irrespective of how many networks were uh, behind uh, your, your trunk. Um, the design... Uh, was also done using a driver-based framework that allowed us to decouple you know, the various efforts and allow us to um, deliver this functionality on top of a number of uh, drivers, OVS, Linux Bridge, OVN, Open Daylight, VMware, and Dragonflow over a relatively short span of time. We're talking about here like year and year and a half. All right, so from a high level point of view and uh, you know, the API, pretty much like these are all the, you know, all the building blocks available. Uh, you simply create, you know, you simply have CRUD operations for trunks, and and uh, and that's pretty much it. I mean, you you uh, you can create a trunk, you can uh, then and the way the way we go about it is first of all you start from networks, and networks uh, the networks that you want to pretty much aggregate and expose to a single instance, and then you create you provision ports, and those ports are used as references for your trunk. And um, you obviously need to be careful as to what MAC addresses you're using. Um, typically, when you create VLAN interfaces into, into your Linux guest, you uh, tend to inherit the MAC address of the parent interface. This is not a concept that actually is preserved when you create ports across multiple neutral networks. The MAC address is, uh, is randomly generated. However, you as a user can override it. So make sure that when you create ports that are gonna be used in a trunk, you use the MAC address of the parent port that you want to use as parent within the trunk. Um, and, and that's it. You can then, uh, once you created the trunk, use the parent port and go to VM specifying the parent port ID, or vice versa, in, depending on backends, what you could do, you can boot up a, an instance regularly, the way you would, uh, you know, you would always, you would always done prior to even the, the, the existence of, of, of the trunking API, and then pretty much provision the trunk uh, ports under the hood. So some, some backends allow you to convert, effect, basically uh, convert a, a regular port into being part of, a, part of a trunk and become a parent port. All right, so we have maybe like 50 seconds for, uh, you know, for questions if you, <laughs> you know, if you have some. Uh, if not, uh, Benz can uh, um, potentially give you further, you know, uh, uh, homeworks for you to, to take home. Um, Any questions? What's that? No. No, thanks. Cool. Thanks for that. Okay. So, so uh, basically, uh, of course, while the neutron part of it is uh, the base of it, and that's where the future really lives, I want to, you to, uh, want to point out to you that there are further interfaces through which you can use it. So in the Pyke release, we managed to uh, merge and release uh, trunk support into heat. So now you can even create trunks uh, via heat templates. Uh, so if you have a complex, let's say, VNF uh, application, then you can uh, set up your uh, templates using uh, trunks there. The resource name to look out for is OS Neutron Trunk. Uh, also, hopefully coming up soon, just to prove that it's uh, real as a screenshot, there will be Horizon support for it. This is uh, partially merged into the Pike release, but the full release uh, will be only coming in Queens, and the current version is kind of hidden behind an experimental flag. 
Uh, so you will have both these convenience interfaces. And if you are interested in more, then of course you can always come up to us and ask questions. We will be also here during the day. Or you can just download the slides and click on those references and read through nice introductory blog posts or the various reference documentations that describe how the feature works. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for your attention.